The regular season Big 12 men's basketball slate is officially complete, and two Red Raiders have made the all Big 12 squads. In today's video, we'll discuss Pop Isaacs and Darion Williams being named to the all Big 12 third team and why it's absolutely inexcusable that Darion Williams didn't at least make the second team. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxwell here for the Back to 12 podcast. And listen, if you think that Darion Williams got snubbed, and uh, I'll get my reasons here a little bit later because it's about to be a rant time here in the second part of the video. Just simply like the video if you think he got snubbed from the all Big 12 second team because well, I'll let the cat out of the bag. I think he did. We're going to give you some stats in terms of just how historic Darion Williams' first season at Texas Tech was and much more so. If you're with me and you agree that Darion Williams got snubbed from the all Big 12 second team, just simply like the video. And I need to remind y'all one more time. Remember, hey, we're going to have a live stream here of the first NCAA tournament game of the Grants McCaslin era at Texas Tech. So be sure you're subscribed to the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube and come hang out. I'll have a special guest. We'll be doing play-by-play, -play, live interaction with the chat, and much more. So if you want to join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube, it's really simple. Just do three things. Like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. All right, let's start with Pop Isaacs first, because I think this was warranted. I know that there's some people out there that think that Pop making the third team was a little bit of a stretch. He finished fourth in the Big 12 in scoring, people. I get it. He was frustrating at times, and it was a roller coaster. But 16 points per game in the toughest conference in America, yeah, you're probably going to make one of those teams. Now, also, Joe Toussaint received honorable mention. Those were the three Red Raiders that actually got some recognition. Of course, Darion Williams. Pop Isaacs, Joe Tussar. Now, on the pop front, I just mentioned he finished tied for fourth in the Big 12 with 16 points per game. He went through some up and downs. He was frustrating this year. I'm right there with you. I get it. But overall, when Pop Isaacs plays well, Texas Tech's ceiling goes exponentially higher. It's just the reality of the situation. Now, his total line for the regular season was 16 points, 3.2 rebounds, 3.6 assists, and he shot 30% from three. Obviously, that 30% from three is not ideal. And there was a stretch there, you remember, where it felt like he couldn't hit a broadside of a barn and he was really struggling from deep. However, the last four games for Texas Tech, going into the most important time of the year for the Red Raiders, Pop Isaacs is averaging 16.5 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 3.5 assists, and is shooting north of 35% from three. He's one of those guys where, again, he's streaky. I get it. But this stat right here is super interesting as well. And we got a couple of Ryan Mainville stats from the Gambling Gauchos. Does tremendous work when it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball. If you haven't followed him on Twitter, you should 100% do so. He posted this tweet yesterday. Pop has scored the fourth most points in the Big 12 conference play for a Red Raider ever. Only behind Jarrett Culver, Keenan Evans twice, and he actually tied Bryson Williams. Not too bad, if you ask me. Again, just think how much better it would be if he was a little bit more efficient shooting. That being said, from a Texas Tech perspective, if you are a fan of the Red Raiders, the thing you're taking away from this in terms of what I just said about Pop Isaacs is the last four games. 16 and a half, 3.2 rebounds, 3.5 assists, and he's shooting north of 35%. He's getting back on track at the most important time for the Red Raiders, and it couldn't come soon enough as well. They head to Kansas City, and then they will find out their fate on Selection Sunday and their seating after that. And when Pop plays well, as I just mentioned, that ceiling just goes higher and higher for the Red Raiders. All right, it's ranting time. I, I, I've let y'all, uh, I've let y'all have it in terms of just you know a little bit of a get yourselves ready. When I saw that Darion Williams was on the All Big Twelve third team, I thought it was a joke. Like I, I, I thought maybe it was a misprint or something. In Big Twelve play, Darion Williams is averaging north of thirteen points a game eight rebounds per game, and he just had one of the most efficient shooting seasons by a Big 12 player ever. Again, another Ryan Mainville stat here. Go follow him on Twitter. He's absolutely sensational. Big 12 player since 1992. Obviously, the Big 12 started in the early 2000s, but you get the drift here. These are the players that have averaged north of 13 points per game, eight-plus rebounds, while shooting 45%-plus from three on over 40 attempts in conference play. You ready for the list? I'll get I'll make sure you guys are ready. Hold on one second. 
Darion Williams. That's the list. That's the entire list, okay? And D5 shot 52.3% from three in Big 12 play. There is absolutely no legitimate reason whatsoever that he should not make the all Big 12 second team. And I know there's going to be somebody in the comments, RC, who gives a shit, right? Like, let's focus on winning basketball games. Well, these guys do, and he deserves it. He is a guy, if you remember the stretch that Texas Tech had in the Big 12, let's think about it, okay? You lose a guy in Devin Cambridge who did not play a single minute for the Red Raiders in the Big 12, okay? So you think about it from that perspective. Darion Williams is going to be asked to do just a little bit more because now Devin Cambridge is out. You think about the time that Warren Washington is missed. You also think about the flu aspect and the illness that Texas Tech went through. The one constant all year long in the starting lineup in terms of you knew what he was going to give you each and every damn night in the toughest conference in America was Darion Williams. You have to give him his flowers, in my opinion. And now I'm not saying that, you know, the all big 12 third team is something to, you know, sneeze at, knock down or anything like that. Not trying to say that, but he's better than that. He deserved to at least be on the all big 12 second team because you're talking about a team that finished tied for third in the standings and secured a double buy and will be the fourth seed in Kansas City. And your star this year on one of the best teams in the toughest conferences in America did not make the all big 12 second team. And now I know what all, everybody else is going to say too. Well, RC, if you're putting Darion Williams up there, who are you taking off? I'm glad you asked. And here it is. I'm taking LJ Cryer off. And the reason being is this. Every player I'm talking about here and guys that I would take off are phenomenal players. There's no doubt about it. But you're going to notice a trend by the two guys that I'm going to talk about. LJ Cryer. Who was the best player in the Big 12? Monchette, right? Player of the year. He got named that and rightfully so. He is the best player in the Big 12. He's running alongside LJ Cryer. Right. Obviously, Eldred Carrier is going to have a better opportunity at open shots because, well, defenses are scheming against him. Next, you've also got Keyshawn Gilbert, a guy that I love watching. But remind me, who was his point guard? Yeah, he's on the first team in Gibsy, right? So you think about that. You think about that these guys are on the list, and I'm not saying they're not good players. They are phenomenal. But think about what Darion Williams had to do each and every night for Texas Tech on a team that suffered monumental injuries. I mean, two of your most senior-laden guys in Warren Washington and Devin Cambridge missed a ton of time in the Big 12. Devin Cambridge didn't even play a single minute, as I mentioned, and Warren Washington did not play since the UCF game, damn near the last month of the Big 12 season. Darion Williams is a star in the best conference in America. And to have him on the third team in the Big 12, albeit a great honor, I get it. I really, really do. But to not have him higher after the historic season he just had again, Ryan Mainville with the stat. This is clutch. Big 12 player since 1992. Yes, I understand that the Big 12 conference started in the early 2000s. But nonetheless, who averaged 13 plus points per game eight plus rebounds per game while shooting north of 45% from three on over 40 attempts in conference play. There's one name on the list and I will give you no time to answer it because of course it's Darion Williams. It's an absolute travesty. It's inexcusable that he did not at least make the all big 12 second team. And, and it comes down to add a little bit more fuel to the fire. If you're Texas tech, because he's your star alongside pipe, Pop Isaacs, I get that. I really do. But the season that Darion Williams had in his first year in the Big 12, after being a true freshman at Nevada and being the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year, it feels like they're sliding tech a little bit in this one and not really giving them their credit and their due for finishing top three in the Big 12, albeit tied. Who gives a shit? You had more wins than Kansas, and you got a double bye in the Big 12 tournament. And Darion Williams was your consistent star night in and night out each and every night in the toughest conference in America, he deserves to be on the all big 12 second team, period. End of story. Welcome to my rant. And if you agree with me that Darion Williams uh, should be on the all big 12 second team, just give me a simple why for yes or in for no. Let me know down in the comments. Appreciate y'all coming to my rant. It's always fun to rant sometimes here on the channel. And I know a lot of y'all like it. One more time, though, in terms of a reminder, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to come hang out with me and a special guest here on the channel for the first NCAA tournament game of the Grant McCaslin era. We will have play-by-play. -play. We'll be having a live chat in a hundred 
hundreds, hundreds of Red Raiders will be coming to hang out with me. I can guarantee you that. So if you want to join the most interactive in the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube, it's really simple. Just do these three simple things for me. Hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell.